I'll be honest, I get bored during action scenes. Books, comics, movies, it doesn't matter what it is, they just get boring. I mean, sometimes an action scene actually works for me. The scene somehow manages to be engaging, maybe even tense, and something makes me want to read or, or watch it more. But what is the difference between a good action scene and a bad action scene? Now, in this context, I'm going to use the term action and fight interchangeably. I know they're not necessarily the same. An action scene could be a chase with no physical violence, and a fight scene is violent by nature. The idea is that you've got a scene where... There's a lot of repetition, and it gets boring. I have three problems with action sequences. One, a toggle with an overly long switch. Usually an action sequence is basically a binary choice. By some measure, the hero either gains an advantage or experiences a setback. You don't have to hate action sequences, but think of your least favorite action sequence. Just think of one. Now imagine, just before the action sequence, the filmmaker cuts away, or the author inserts a page break and starts a new chapter. The next scene, or the next chapter, is the hero, bloodied and battered, exhausted and ready to fall over. Someone asks them, what happened? And the hero says, well, the hero either says, we've got a problem. They beat us to the MacGuffin. Or the hero lifts a briefcase and says, I got it. I got the MacGuffin. From the hero's appearance, we understand that there was a fight. It was probably very exciting. It was probably lasted for like five minutes of screen time. And, you know, there's a lot of important things to spend screen time on that aren't just the hero and the villain punching each other. So about 70% of the time, I'd estimate, it's the setup and the resolution of a conflict that we actually care about. So why do we put ourselves through that stuff in the middle? Two. The devil's in the details. Villain punches the hero. Hero punches the villain. Then the villain punches the hero. Again. Then the hero punches the villain. Again. And just basically repeat that 20 times. That's 95% of fight scenes. Authors and filmmakers and illustrators try to fool us by replacing uh, punch number 4 with a kick and punch number 14 with a chair broken over the hero's back, but... That doesn't fool me. Most action scenes are the same action repeated over and over in a slightly different location for visual appeal. 3. Realism. In real life, a skirmish is very often over in mere seconds. Humans are frail. It doesn't take long for them to get damaged enough to realize they're better off getting away from the situation. And, you know, weapons make the decision happen even faster by hook or by crook. So those are three reasons I tend to dislike action sequences. But I do admit that there are some really good action sequences out there. A good action sequence isn't about the action, though. Sure, action is happening, but the scene, the sequence, is actually about something else. And here's how that often gets expressed successfully. 1. Walk and talk. A walk and talk scene in a film or in a book is the time when you have two characters walking around talking to each other as a way of conveying plot elements to the audience. A walk and talk action sequence happens when there's dialogue inserted between bursts of action. It's a very common trick. It's painfully common in Marvel movies. The team of superheroes fight against impossible odds, but as they fight, they still find time to make plans for where they're going to go to lunch later. It's in The Lord of the Rings when Gimli and Legolas decide to have a competition for who can rack up the most kills. That one's sneaky, though, because the dialogue, such as it is, isn't the point. The thing that actually happens is that they come to respect one another. It happens all the time, and sometimes it's as silly as the action itself, but other times it changes the entire plot of the movie because new information is revealed. In the Warhammer 40,000 short story, The Grey Raven, it's done really well. While Balsar and Nidaz, Nidaz, are pursued by Adeptus Custodes, we learn through their frantic evolving plans for escape how much stealth is a part of the Raven Guard. We learn from their actions, too. Nidaz protects Balsar, even though Balsar says he doesn't need the man's help. And Nidaz refuses to fight against the Custodes directly because he's honor-bound to do no harm to a servant of the Emperor. While Balsar resists the use of his Psyker powers because he's honor-bound to reject them. You get all that information in a scene that 
would be otherwise just described as some mean guys chase some space marines through a ship. 2. Action figure documentation. As a kid, I had a lot of Star Wars action figures. I would send them on adventures through the backyard, which was exactly like the forest moon of Endor. I had a pretty good assortment of rebels and imperial forces, and I knew exactly how each side fought. What their chances of hitting was, didn't actually think about the percentages, but stormtroopers would miss. Just know that sort of thing. Which weapons they favored, and so on, because I watched the movies probably every day for at least a decade of my life. I had all the data I needed for my play because I saw these heroes at work, I saw them in action, I saw them their downtime. Good action sequences help develop characters, but sometimes the character is a particular kind of sword, or a specific kind of laser blaster, or a hover bike, or a monster. For a sci-fi and fantasy geek, I think this is one of the most significant aspects of action sequences. You don't care whether the hero is better off or worse off after the scene, you just want the raw data on how these objects work. What happens when you swing a long sword into an orc shield? Just how heavy is that battle axe or warhammer? What effect does a magic circle have on your enemies? R.A. Salvatore writes some of the best fight scenes I've ever read. The fights in the Drizzt novels are not abbreviated. He does not cut away from them only to tell you the end result. He writes every action out, and it's engrossing. You get to see different character classes go up against familiar monsters you know from the game's bestiary. You get all the data, and it is exciting. I don't know whether that kind of data harvesting works for all fiction. I guess there's probably somebody interested in all kinds of data, but for me, I don't really trust films or books to accurately describe, say, modern warfare, and I'm frankly not interested in the all-too-realistic ways of damaging other humans, but for fantasy and sci-fi, the lack of realism is exactly why I enjoy the fight scenes. None of this data is real, and while I can imagine my own scenarios, it's fun to gather data about the, quote, real way things work within the fictional settings I love. So I'm a gamer, so a lot of this applies equally to fiction as it does to to playing games. And in role-playing games, combat is often a divisive mechanic. Some players play almost entirely for combat. They endure the role-play just to get to the combat. Other players are the exact opposite. They endure the combat so that everyone can leave them alone so that they can role-play. And I mean, a few disengage from the game entirely during combat. Regardless of your players, though, pretty much everyone benefits when there are story elements embedded into the combat sequence. Maybe there's a door being guarded by some monsters, or maybe a villainous henchman reveals vital information between swings of his battle axe, or maybe there's a puzzle to be solved by the non-combat players while the party tank defends them. It's not always possible to do that, especially if you're running a module strictly as written and the module wasn't designed that way, or maybe you just decide you need a random combat encounter to happen to delay the party progress so that you can read about the next room that they're definitely not going to reach now because you put them into combat so you'll have time to read about the next room in time for the next session. But it is something to keep in mind. War games are, of course, mostly just the combat parts of an RPG. So it's assumed, I think, that players are happy to engage in a fight scene. That's literally the game. And yet, no war game I've ever played has been just about the fighting. At the barest minimum, there's a story reason for the two armies to be fighting. And often there are extra points, there are victory points for securing an objective or for defending a specific resource. Sometimes there are random tables that you roll on, so you can maybe discover an artifact at a certain location, or places that you can search or loot. In a campaign, the outcome of one game influences how you set up the next game, depending on which team has won. Maybe now they're the defender in the next game where they're trying to block the attackers from getting to a certain point. So even in a game dedicated to a fight scene, there's very often a conscious effort to give it meaning and to allow it to influence the game world in some way. It might seem odd for somebody who reads Warhammer and plays Pathfinder and Tales of the Valiant 
and reads books set in the Forgotten Realms and on Kryn to bemoan action sequences. But narratively, there is an important distinction, I think, between anticipation and realization. The anticipation of an action scene usually means exciting things are happening. That's engaging. The action itself is supposed to last just a few brief seconds. So why do we have three pages about every last move. All that anticipation seems wasted when the actual event is long, drawn out, and obligatory. Good action sequences are possible, though, and when it's not working out, I think it could be better to cut to the next scene, carry on with the part of the story that's interesting. And in terms of your game, you can make your action better by integrating story into it. Of course, it's important to say as well that sometimes you do just want the action scene. That's a valid choice in an RPG, certainly. It's just that in an RPG, unlike, say, a war game, not everyone, strangely, has actually signed up for the combat sequence. I mean, they have. They're playing an RPG with a combat system, and yet they don't necessarily enjoy it. And that's something to consider, potentially. It's also just as important to consider it on the front end of your game. Declare what kind of game you run so people understand this is going to be high-tactic gameplay rather than high roleplay or by accepting that sometimes you just don't need that action scene. Or maybe you do, but some players are going to need something else to do while everyone else spends their time fighting. It is a little bit of a challenge, but why are we playing games if not to challenge ourselves to be better at what we do? Thanks for watching!